I've been reading a lot about the Yamaha Revstar 2 for a while now. This is the second iteration of the Yamaha Revstar. The online reviews are stellar. You'd almost think too stellar. I've never seen this much positive commentary on a guitar in a long while. While on Reverb.com, I clicked on the watch heart on seven of the brand new Element RSE20s, and about 30 minutes later, I had an offer for a brand new Yamaha Revstar Element RSE20 in Swift Blue with a cool racing stripe for $409. This was $90 off the retail price listed. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, and notify. There are three basic levels or lines of the Revstar guitar available to purchase. For the standard and professional lines, there are submodels and variations like humbucker pickups versus P90s. The model number of the entry level is the RSC20, where the RSC stands for Revstar Element. The element would be sort of comparable to the Epiphone line or the higher end Squires. I'm trying to provide a point of price reference for contextual comparison, not comparing really the quality of the different lines. The element ranges new and in price from about $409 and up. Used, they go for as low as the low 300s and up from there. They seem to hold their value. The RSE 20 model of the guitar is made in Indonesia. Next is the standard model, and all the part numbers start with RSS, which stands for Revstar Standard. For the sake of this commentary, I would compare this line of guitars to the Fender Player Series or the Gibson Tributor Studio models. This level of the Revstar goes for the low 700s to about $849. This guitar is also made in Indonesia. Last is the professional line, and the part numbers all begin with RSP, which stands for Revstar Professional. This guitar is made in Japan and prices out at around $1,999 and up, depending on the specifications you choose. The guitar I have on the bench today is the entry level model, the Yamaha Revstar Element RSE20. The body is chambered mahogany, the neck is a three piece mahogany set, the scale length is 24.7. The nut width is 42 millimeter. The fingerboard is made from rosewood with perloid dot alloys. Has a 12 inch radius and has 22 jumbo frets. Hardware, two pneumatic style bridge and stop bar tailpiece, die cast and closed tuners, and all of it's nickel plated. The string spacing on the bridge is 52.5 millimeter. The electronics, there are two YGD designed VH3 covered humbuckers, a three-way lever pickup selector switch, and a volume and tone which you can pull out and it's a dry switch which removes the lows. The weight of my guitar is 7.74 pounds. Pounds. To say that the body is chambered really kind of does a disservice to the Revstar. There are chambered guitars, and they're usually done because they're trying to reduce the amount of weight. Yes, the Revstar is a chambered body, and it does help reduce the weight of the body, but they also have, in this guitar, a another function. The chambers were actually designed using Yamaha's acoustic design process. This process designs the chambers so as to optimize and sculpt tone and increase resonance. The standard and professional models have carbon reinforcement in the necks and also in the body to help improve vibration transfer. The Element model does not. Here's what I'll say about the Element. Playing the guitar not plugged in has the best sounding tone and resonance of any solid body electric guitar that I've played in a long time. Even though the Revstar body is chambering, it does not have sound holes, so it is still considered a solid body and not a hollow body guitar. When you plug in the Revstar element, it only improves. Even on my little positive grid small bench amp, the guitar still sounds incredible. Next, let's talk about the out of the box experience. The other day I took a brand new guitar out of the box directly from the factory. I needed to adjust the truss rod, string height, and intonation to make the guitar what I would call playable. This was a name brand guitar that we all own. It was a high quality guitar. When I examined the guitar, there was fret rocking at three places on the fretboard, and the ends of the frets were about, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give about a 6, meaning they were playable, but a little rough in places. They really needed some attention. When I tested the Revstar, it had no fret rocking anywhere on the fretboard. I ran my hand several times up and down the sides. The ends of the frets were smooth to the touch at all points on the fretboard. The fretboard did not need oiling before putting a new set of strings on. The truss rod was adjusted perfectly, and so was the string height and intonation. The tuners are smooth and function the way they're supposed to. There's no catch 
or grinding or sloppiness to them. They have a retro look to them, which is cool. And when you come back to the guitar day after day, once you've stretched out your strings, the guitar actually stays in tune. Also, I've heard that this guitar is kind of Yamaha's kind of take of a modern version of the Gibson SG. One thing it doesn't have is it doesn't have the head dive where it's really, really heavy on the head. The guitar sits with you perfectly balanced and, you know, doesn't move. I plug the guitar in and everything functioned exactly the way it was supposed to out of the box. The guitar finish is beautiful and unflawed and unique with a glossy finish. What you notice right away when you pick up the guitar and start playing is how smooth the neck is. It's a satin finish and not glossy like the rest of the guitar. What I don't run into very often is there's nothing I would replace or upgrade on this guitar. I would not characterize this guitar as being a mod platform. It just does not need it. Overall, the Revstar is amazingly playable as a guitar, even the Element model. In the past six months, I have unboxed a lot of guitars. I would characterize this unboxing experience as probably one of the best experiences I've had in a long time. Prior to this, the only Yamaha that I've ever owned my entire life is I have basically a 40 plus year old Yamaha acoustic that my father bought me when I was young. I've never had a predisposition towards Yamaha electric guitars, primarily focused on Fender and Gibson USA made. So it sounds like, you know, they either gave me a guitar or paid me to see all this, but they didn't. I bought this with my own money and I'm telling you actually what I have encountered and discovered. This video, I recorded eight sound samples. I recorded each position of the switch clean, first without the dry switch, then with the dry switch enabled. Then I did the same thing with the neck pickup with distortion, first without the dry switch, and then with the dry switch. See if you can hear the difference. If you like this video, click like, subscribe, and notify.